Welcome back to Football 365. I'm Coach Ed Jones, along with my guest, Bill Rice, who's the former owner of the Troy Messenger and managing former managing editor of the Montgomery Independent. And he is independently working on several projects here in Montgomery. He actually started as a sports writer, and I think that's still his main love, but uh, he's doing all kind of things, and we were glad to have him with us. For, we're going to get into the Alabama wide receivers in just a minute, but for more football, 365, go to EVTV10, and you can watch it anytime during the day and all day if you want to. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bill, uh, tell me about the wide receivers at Alabama, some that left and some that are coming up. Before I do, I'm gonna, you've got me going back in uh, my career. My first job was as a sports editor at the Troy Messenger. And you <laughs> want to know one of my first big stories was the hiring of Larry Blakeney as the head football coach at Troy State then, which was then a Division II program. Right. And today, this will be Troy starts spring practice today, and it will be the first practice that Coach Blakeney has not led in 25 years. So that tells you how long ago I was sports editor at the Troy Messenger. Well, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> but that's Troy football. I've seen some great athletes at Troy. But my team going back to when I was five years old is the Crimson Tide. And I, I study them like uh, some people study, uh, like doctors study their biology or anatomy. Alabama, uh, that's a big mystery for this football team this year is the receiver position. Really, the whole offense. Uh, Alabama loses nine starters, I believe, on offense. They lose every starting receiver, plus they're tied in. So that's four guys they got to replace. That's the bad news. The good news is, is they got some very good talent on paper, primarily. You know, they've, they've got the bona fides and the credentials. But some of these guys have, have played a good bit, Ed, and they've played meaningful minutes, and you can tell they've got talent. Now it's their time to step up. A couple players that I'm looking for, for to make big contributions. Chris Black, he came in with Amari Cooper as a freshman. He was redshirted, unlike Amari. But he actually had more hype coming out of high school than Amari Cooper. He's slowly gotten a little better at Alabama. I think he caught about a dozen balls last year. I've watched him in spring games. He's explosive and quick. I think Chris Black will be a good one. And then Alabama has another explosive receiver called uh, Ardarius Stewart. I like him too. And then they've got a young kid that hasn't done much yet, but coming out of high school, Robert Foster was a five-star recruit and considered one of the best receivers in the country. And you can really put about four or five guys into that category. So Alabama will go about seven or eight deep. Out of those eight players, I think they're gonna get five or six that can contribute. The question is, which one's gonna be the bell cap? You got any well, ideas? Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't really know because the uh, Alabama lost from Maury Cooper, DeAndre White, uh, Christian Jones, and the tight end Brian Vogel. Those people contributed quite a bit over the last two or three years. Uh, now, I'm gonna say something that might be controversial, but I don't care because it's what I believe. Uh, I think that uh, Lane Kiffin, uh, the third or fourth offensive coordinator that Coach Saban has had, is very good at coming up with uh, schemes for individual players. For instance, Amari Cooper was placed in the backfield, he was placed in the slot, he was placed in the wide receiver. Uh, he, he had all kind of uh, jobs and in order to get him into the offense. And that was smart because uh, Amari Cooper was the best home run hitter that, all, that Alabama had. He was our best player and he made sure our best player got the ball. But what happens when you do that and all of a sudden a defense says, hey, we can forget these other guys, they just gonna throw it to Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. And that happened uh, several times that year. Uh, you cannot be one dimensional on in your throwing game. Uh, so so maybe I, it's a good thing I, we don't have Amari a, Cooper because they'll spread the ball around. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the defense cannot concentrate on anybody coming up this fall because they're all pretty good. And one, one guy I didn't mention, Ed, and we talked about him off air, is Kenyon Drake, 
you know that they're going to try to work him into the passing game as well I when think he's not lining up as the tailback and running back. Kenyon Drake has been a favorite of mine since he was a freshman. I like the way this kid runs the football with complete abandon and, 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 and lack of worry about his own body. He would throw it in there, and he broke his leg last year. If he can stay healthy, he's got the speed, the power to help him at running back behind Derrick uh, Henry, and he can do some of the things that Amari Cooper did last year. Or uh, that Reggie Bush used to do at USC oh, when right. Lane Kiffin was coaching well, Reggie Bush. Uh, now, I'm on, I've said some good things about Lane Kiffin. Now, I'm going to say some bad things about Lane Kiffin. I think that uh, Lane Kiffin uh, does not see the entire picture on offense, and that is make first downs, not touchdowns, first downs. And if you make first downs, you will have touchdowns. So you can work and work and work and try to get the right position and the right defensive back on your right receiver and score a touchdown. It happens real quick, and your defense is back out there. Uh, I don't. Alabama's history has been big, strong linemen, pound the defense, pound the defense, pound those big backs in there, and throw when you want to. So I think that. You know, he, I don't think he sees the picture, and I don't know why Saban doesn't hold him down on that. But we'll see what happens. That's, this will be the second year they work together. Now talk a little bit about uh, some other people on that. Well, one one name I should mention is O.J. Howard from right in our area in yeah. Prattville. Uh, he's shown flashes of brilliance, uh, much as expected of him, a receiving threat at tight end. Frankly, Ed, I'll believe it when I see it. You know, all these coaches talk about we're going to work the tight end into the passing game this year. It seems to never happen or uh, hadn't happened for uh, 20, 25 years at Alabama. Well, I'm going to make a prediction. O.J. Howard will never be a good tight end. I think he is a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I think he's a big, strong, pretty fast wide receiver. I don't think he's going to ever learn to block. And so it's a really waste putting him against the tackle and hoping that they're going to get some good blocking out of it. And they're wasting the, 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 uh, the threat of him being a wide receiver. He's so tall, and he'll go after the football. And I like him, but I don't like him as a tight end. I like Dakota Ball. I mean, anybody with a name like that ought to be a tight end. Dakota Ball. And he's a... He's a tackle that's playing tight end, and <laughs> Alabama's had good luck putting these big 300-pound guys at tight end. That's what I like. That's back when Alabama had that running game you were talking about yeah. where they tried to get four or five yards of carry. They played two tight ends, and some of them were converted defensive yeah. tackles. Well, I think they better get back to what they do best, and they've, they've won several national championships for them. They've gotten away from it, uh, even though Saban says he wants to open up the offense more. Uh, you can open it up to where you're not effective. And I think Alabama was ineffective against Ole Miss, ineffective against Arkansas, ineffective against LSU, and ineffective against Ohio State. And that's unusual for Alabama. Ed Jones for offensive coordinator at Alabama. <laughs> I'll take the job. Uh, when I was coaching, they didn't pay much. But I'll take <laughs> that one. changed a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, well, we enjoyed being with you today on Football 365. So don't forget to watch us on EVTV10 if you want more Football 365. But be sure to watch us at 11 o'clock Saturday morning on Fox 20. We'll see you next week.